fertilizer and your seed. So we put the seed in the back, the fertilizer in the front. The wind is blowing and all of the other things that come with a gaseous stuff. But observance hours are good hours. Hey guys, welcome back to Ag With Them. If you're new here, my name is Emma. I travel all over the place doing farm tours and farm hand work. I'm currently in North Dakota and we're seeding wheat right now. We'll be moving on to sunflowers shortly. So we've been in the middle of seeding and spraying and getting other things done that come with spring work. Today's video, I'll be running over how an air seeder works with you guys. I've done this before on my channel, but it's good to refresh everyone's memory really quick. And also, if you'd like one of these farm shirts that I'm wearing, it's a, you can't really tell because North Dakota is a square, but it's a North Dakota farm shirt. And Farm T Co is the company that makes these. She carries all 50 states in a lot of different color sizes for men and women. So if you'd like a farm shirt for your state, make sure you check out the link in the description of this video. You can go to farmtco.com and use code AG with Emma for a 15% discount. humid. The weather is not permitting for us to seed this morning quite yet. Hopefully it clears up before the rain comes this afternoon because we're supposed to get a lot of rain in the next two days. Um, but we're doing some cleanup. To adequately explain the maintenance that we're doing, just to give you guys an idea of how an air seeder runs, I'm going to give you another quick breakdown. We're running hoe drills right now and I'll just show you what we're doing. Well, on the farm we currently have four drills running and they're all pulled with nine series tractors. There's two 9Rs and two 9RXs. This is a 53 foot drill. The other three are 60 foot, I believe, 60 or 61 ish. And then behind every drill, this is the service truck, not included, but very important. Behind every drill, you're going to have your cart and then you're going to have two anhydrous ammonia tanks behind every single drill that are running on the farm. This drill is an 1820 and it has 54 openers. It's a 53 foot drill. They're 12 inch spacing, so this is the main component. This is the hoe of the hoe drill. So it's kind of kicked up, I'm gonna try to clean it off a little bit. I've covered an air seeder on my channel before, but that was like last year, so we're just gonna, we're gonna jog your memory real quick. So we'll start back here with the anhydrous. It does say inhalation hazard because this gas is uh, very bad to inhale. Um, there's a lot of guys that have been harmed by anhydrous, so it's very important to be careful when you're handling it, when you're removing hoses, when you're switching tanks. It's very important to be mindful of where the wind is blowing and all of the other things that come with a gaseous stuff. And pause. I'm going to take this opportunity to educate you guys a little bit more on why we apply anhydrous while we're seeding because I've learned through posting more videos on the internet while we've been seeding that not a lot of people see this. So we do apply anhydrous at the same time we seed wheat. Because of that paired row, we are able to insert the anhydrous about an inch or two deeper. And then that paired row is a little more shallow where the wheat and dry fertilizer are being put. So once that wheat grows up a little bit more, it's gonna be able to latch onto that anhydrous and give it its extra boost for an increased yield in protein, which increases the farmer's profitability. And that anhydrous goes about an inch or two deeper. So it doesn't burn the seed right away unless that seed falls down into the anhydrous row. There are different forms of nitrogen available, but because of cost efficiencies and equipment and time, and the amount of acres we just choose to apply anhydrous because applying liquid nitrogen or urea is a lot more expensive and it takes more equipment for less concentrated forms of nitrogen. Urea is about 46% nitrogen and liquid N is anywhere from 28 to 32% nitrogen. And the liquid nitrogen actually gels up up here because when you have 32% nitrogen, it gels up in cold temperatures. And if you don't know North Dakota, it does get cold here, even during planting season. And then another aspect behind that is that it can cost up to 10 to $25 more per acre to apply urea or liquid nitrogen. We currently apply 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre with the anhydrous tanks, and we have to switch out tanks about every 100 acres, which is about every three to four hours during the day. It is dangerous to handle, so we do take precautions like I mentioned in the video. If you guys have any more questions, I'd be happy to get answers for you. So just leave them down below and we'll see what we can do in future videos. Now we can get back to rolling on air seeders. Also, I interchangeably call it a hoe drill, drill, and air seeder. It all means the same thing. Valves up here. Um, this one is open so that it leaks into this one. You can close that one. And then there's a 
there's a couple different valves up here to control um, like the uh, air leak and then the main one and then the hose for this tank. So then that anhydrous tube comes up and it connects right here. It goes through the cart so it follows up all the way up to the drill. That is the fan. Um, it's the air behind the air seeder. So this fan is going to run back here and it's going to run through all of these tubes and in here you have your fertilizer and your seed. So we put the seed in the back, the fertilizer in the front. Since the fertilizer is more corrosive on the tubes, you're going to put it in the front of your cart. That fan is going to blow the seed and the fertilizer that comes out of these meter housings and it's going to blow it through the tubes and up. So these meter housings are turning and it's dropping fertilizer, dropping seed, and then blowing it combined. So there's fertilizer and seed in each tube. And then it comes up here, follows these other tubes. And you can see the tubes are gonna get smaller up here. So it's in, the, the fertilizer and seed is right here. I believe that's your anhydrous. If you trace it back, These other tubes are going to be hydraulics, electrical things. You can see the towers up here and that's what we're going to go to next. We're just standing right over there. Those big tubes come up to the front of the drill and they turn into these towers. Tubes from back there, loop around, come up to the front of the tractor. The big hoses in the back are your primary hoses and those are coming through here and they're hooking up to these towers yep. and then, and then it, distributes it distributes it. So the primary goes to the secondary comes up of that tube and then it comes out through those secondary hoses and out right here and that's the seed seed and the fertilizer and this is an older intelligent ag sensor so it's just making sure that the seed isn't blocking up because if you start blocking up down here it's going to fill up this tube and then it's going to be like beep, 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 plugged then the anhydrous comes out of these tubes into right here and comes out the middle right there and the anhydrous tower is right there so that's where the anhydrous hooks up comes down the hoses now that you have that quick breakdown of how an air seeder works i'm going to show you what we're doing this morning to help it run better down there blowing out air brakes and the air brakes are here to prevent the seed from bouncing if the fan has too much pressure because the fan I just showed you you have to have it at the perfect level so that it's not plugging your drill but it's also not blowing the seed out and making it bounce out of the ground or you know into the anhydrous hole because if it bounces into the anhydrous line then it burns the seed and then it doesn't grow it's not viable. So what these air brakes do is the seed and the air get to right here and then the air leaves. So the air comes out of these holes and then the seed just drops into the ground instead of having all of this pressure all the way through and then it's flying down out of this opener and it goes boing and then comes back out. So this is going to let all that air out of the tube, not all of it, I think he said like 60% of the air, and then it's just going to softly drop into the ground and the seed and the fertilizer is going to come out right there on one of these. We're also going to see is that these are staggered. So there's a row up there, a staggered row right there, and then another row right here. This allows you to have that 12 inch spacing without everything being like super close together. And then, yeah, it just makes sense. It's all bloop, bloop, bloop. There's two different kinds of air seeders. Well, there's a lot of different kinds, but there's mostly hoe drills and disc drills. And this is a hoe drill because there's a lot less maintenance on them. Craig likes them a lot better to run. Um, he doesn't like messing with the disc drills. A lot of people do, but um, up here, there's a lot more hoe drills. The hard thing with hoe drills is setting your depth. So they're seeding at about an inch depth right now this year, and that's more shallow than they have been. But he was also saying that if you're not seeing a little bit of seed on the ground, that you're too deep because it is hard to adjust the depth of a hoe drill since they're always bouncing around. It's not as consistent and there's just a lot of problems with getting just the right depth because he said they're a cowboy drill. Cowboy planter? I think he said cowboy drill. That is what is happening this morning. We're blowing out air brakes, making sure that everything is set and ready to go for when we can start rolling again because there's a lot of points that we forget about while we're running 
and when you have the chance to slow down and really look over your drill make sure all of the components are working right that it's not wearing in the wrong places that it, and that it's doing its job correctly you take that opportunity so that's what we will be doing for the next couple days because it is about to get very moist a lot more proponents to discuss about drills but um for right now i think that's a good intro because i'm gonna be here for olive seeding probably all of the summer and all of harvest and then we'll see where this winter takes us so from where i'm standing you can see one uh two three there's another one running in this field i think they're in the back though so you can't see them from the hill if i had my drone you'd be able to see everybody but i don't have my drone yet it's coming in the mail very soon This is where he just went by. It's pretty moist, looking very good. So we're supposed to get a good amount of rain. Hopefully, I don't think they're gonna be able to finish this field before it rains, but we don't know. It's supposed to start raining soon. Matt is done with the seven acre patch he was working in. I'm gonna go jump in with him. And then hopefully we'll get a good amount of these fields knocked out before it starts to rain. But they've said it's kind of traditional that it starts raining when they're in these fields. So we'll see how it works out. So far, it has not rained today. It is currently 2 p.m. and we are still whipping away. Um, we don't know when it's gonna rain because apparently the weather app cannot be trusted anymore. So we're still gonna try to get as much done as possible per usual before it rains because it will probably rain tomorrow, but then again, we don't know. There's just a higher percent percentage tomorrow and everything that we thought was gonna be here by now has been pushed back until like tomorrow morning. So we will probably be here all day long. The 100 acres we have to fill up. So we just ran out of anhydrous and we are headed across the field where they have seed and fertilizer waiting in a trailer for us. And then we're gonna rehook up to some new anhydrous tanks and then be good to go for another 100 acres. Matt just got out for the day. It's 4:20. Um, we have a little bit more left in this field. They're finishing up the field across the road, and then they'll probably get done with that by the time we're done with this. And then we're moving um, south. So if we move today, that would be good. But if we don't move today, then 
we're not going to start on that field, I think, because of the rain that's expected. So if you're going to be out of the field for a couple days, you don't really start on a new field, especially if you can't get it done the day you start before the rain. One thing with these drills is that the power lines are almost the same height as the drill. So you're going to see here, you have to raise and lower your drill going down the road. Um, and most of them they clear, but if they can't clear them, then it gets icky. So we have moved fields and Matt is doing the headlands and I actually sprayed this field on the first day that I started spraying and the weeds all look like they're turning lighter green so that is very good. Um, that means that the sprayer did its job and that that volunteer wheat will not be coming up to rob the wheat that we want to grow of its nutrients and all the good stuff. For now I'm just watching Matt do headlands because uh, I'm not as good at following the line with the tractor yet. I'm still getting practice in. It's kind of hard to keep this straight right where you want it, so I just watch. But observance hours are good hours. So you can see right there, that's what we were trying to spray. And hopefully, I think from here it looks like it's turning lighter, so that's good. And since we are seeding into wheat that was well, we're seeding into a field that was also wheat last year, so you can see right there, whoever did the headlands on this last year didn't get close enough, so that's why it's always better to be a little bit over than over that way, because then you have these skips, and everyone gets to see your mistakes for years to come. But it's not easy. It's easier said than done to keep it in line and not too much over and not skipping. So we are... Oh, there we go. That's why we are wrapping up for the night. <laughs> it's like Winco bulk shopping for <laughs> farmers. <laughs> you hear that? That's the sound of we're not planting tomorrow. <laughs> Duke, are we rained out? Are we rained out? We're rained out for a couple days. Got about four inches. That's gonna have us stopped. All right guys, that's all I have for you this time. Remember if you enjoyed the video to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any more adventures. I will be continuing to work in North Dakota throughout this season and I'm super excited to share everything that we get to do and learn up here. As always, thanks for watching. Hasta la pasta.